Hey everybody, I just got back from Adobe this week and my mind was blown by the new version of Photoshop and what it can do. Photoshop is now connected to generative AI, which is powered by Adobe Firefly. If you saw my demo on Adobe Firefly, you know what it's capable of and there's a lot more coming. But let me just show you really quick what you can do in Adobe Photoshop. I'm working in the new beta version. You can get to that by going to your Creative Cloud, going to Apps, going to beta apps, and then downloading the beta version of Photoshop. That means you can have two versions of Photoshop running. One's the newest beta version, which isn't like a totally official yet. So we're in the beta version of Photoshop. I'm gonna to go to my crop tool. I'm gonna to extend this background up, and I am just gonna to go to my marquee tool, and I want this to fill, and I want it to look like I'm really there. So I'm gonna to go to generative fill, you can see I have this new contextual taskbar. I'm not going to enter a prompt. I'm just going to click Generate and let it do its magic. And wow, you can see that it filled the top end pretty seamlessly. Here in the taskbar, I can view my variations that it gives me, and I think that one looks the best, so I'm going to stick with that. Here under Properties, you can see your variations, and you can see your layer that it generated. You can turn off that layer to see the original space. All right, now I want to generate more going the other direction, so I'm just going to go out here, and I am going to select this area and click Generative Fill, and just click Generate. And hopefully it will figure out what's going on with this chair here, <laughs> and not just create some sort of soft sculpture. And let it do its thing. And wow, pretty incredible. It left a little seam. I think that might be due to my selection process. I could have selected it a little bit better. but that's looking pretty good. Let me try to reselect that. Let's do a new one. Let's try again. There we go. Now we're getting that kind of, ooh, it even put a table in the background. Office environment fill. That feels pretty good to me. So you could see how powerful that this can be. Let's try another image. Okay, let's try this ice cream image. So if I wanted to make this look like it got licked off, I can just select this area and I could click generative fill and just click generate. Now, in the old days, and by old days, I mean a few months ago, I would have had to fill this with content aware fill and then probably use the clone tool and some painting techniques to make this look like that it had been licked off of. But you can see with generative fill, you can quickly change that image and make it look seamless. It can even change really complex background. So let's say I wanted to get rid of my hand and just have a beach in this image. I can just select this area, click generate to fill, generate, and it is going to get rid of this complex background. And wow, it filled it, it gave us a wave, and it looks like I was never there. <laughs> All right, let's try another one. Let's take a look at this image. So let's say I wanted to fill this mock-up with a little bit more of something in this empty space. 
I could take my ellipse tool, let's make a circle there, and let's put a cup of coffee. So I'm going to put coffee, let's say overhead, and click generate. Now hopefully it will give us a decent looking cup. Maybe it will give us a little bit of shadow. And we won't have much work to do except for exporting. Oh, voila. That one looks a little bit cartoony and has a pretty drastic shadow. So luckily we have variations. Wow, that looks pretty real. Pretty amazing. Ooh, that looks nice and tasty. I think we have a good balance there with that one. So yeah, you can add things to images pretty easily as you can see. Now let's do some work on this one. So let's use this image and try to combine a couple of these principles that we've learned. So I'm just going to extend the cropping of this up. And I'm going to just select this. Click Generate to Fill, click Generate. Let us it do its thing, and it's probably going to give us a pretty beautiful, seamless extension of this wall background. And then I want to extend the wall this way. So let's say you're working on a double page spread, or a header for a website, or a set of ads, and you need more space for typography. That's a great way to do it. And look how beautiful and seamless that is. It gave us a couple of subtle variations. They all look good, so I'm going to stick with that. Let's just extend this wall out this direction now. And I'm going to select this here, click Generative Fill, and click Generate. And hopefully it will give us, you know, a really smooth transition and a full wall. I mean, in the old days, you would have had to copy this. And by old days, like once again, I just mean a few months ago, and paste it and flip it and do a lots of cloning work, maybe even taking parts of other images. So it would have been a lot of work to really fill this in properly. And wow, look at that. We have an instant full, ooh, that's not right. And that's not right. But this full first version is just about perfect. So one last thing we can do is, let's give it a little more interest and let's add a little Let's put a little pigeon here. So now I'm going to type in pigeon and click generate. Wow, there we have our pigeon. <laughs> looks pretty great. Let's see our variations. They all look good. I like this last one and this first one the best. So let's use that pigeon there. And you can see that in just under two and a half minutes, we were able to extend this background seamlessly and add a whole new little animal into our picture and create a whole new narrative with the original picture that we started out with. So I hope you enjoy playing with some of these new tools in Adobe Photoshop Beta.